They clearly try to extort money from me. Um, I mean, I sit with the smile, but I wasn't laughing when I was up there. Hey, we say no touching, no touching, not on the first day. This is the, the face of my uh, daily uh, budget for food. How genuine is that? That is not the genuine. <laughs> That's good, he's, he's being honest. They were very good at taking my money, no problem. <laughs> but giving me my visa, problem. Good morning, people. Namaste. I'm riding downtown Kathmandu. Pretty cool. I'm going to sort my uh, visa out because I'm still riding like I'm legit in this country, but I'm clearly not. So I've got to go to immigration this morning. As you know, I just arrived last night and that's pretty much the reason why I came to Kathmandu to get my visa because otherwise I would have taken my time because the way from the Indian border to Kathmandu I pretty much crossed the whole country. Hey, 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 hey. We say no touching, no touching, not on the first date. I'm pretty sure I've got to go right. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm just first day in the new capital and I'm saying I'm pretty sure I've got to go right. I have no idea where I'm going, guys. So busy, busy street, eh? And there's a lot of people. It must be university around here. Yeah, there are so many young people. There must be uh, schools and unis and stuff in here. Yeah, you see Australia, Canada, UK, USA, it's the same everywhere, isn't it? IELTS, PTE. Yeah, the bike is making a funny noise eh? and I think someone in the comment section said that uh, it's probably, uh, yeah, since I fell in the river, it might be coming from the air, from the air filter. Department of Immigration. That's where I just spent the past three hours. Uh, it took me three hours to... Uh, to get it sorted but uh, yeah it's all good now I'm all legit all legal so I can move on bike is back here but before I leave let me tell you a quick story so you see they gave me a uh, 15 days uh, how can I say how can I explain what just happened after a few minutes so they they started to um, obviously they wanted to know what happened I explained to them the story that I I was let through pretty much and then when I realized I went back but they couldn't give me a visa uh, because it didn't have authority and they asked me to go to Kathmandu that I would have to pay a, a daily penalty which is fine which I paid for but the penalty is supposed to be you know X amount of money per, per day which is roughly five dollars so this I paid I actually I even paid a little extra I paid forty dollars uh, but then what I really didn't like and that unfortunately shows the system is a little corrupted they clearly try to extort money from me um, I mean I sit with the smile but I wasn't laughing when I was up there initially I got I mean eventually I got away with it and basically at the beginning she listens to my story and then she goes I, I said I'm sorry I didn't do anything wrong she, she agreed with that she was like yeah I know but you know you have to still pay your penalty fee I'm like that's that's fine and then she goes like the penalty will be 50,000 rupees I'm like what? <laughs> why? and then right away she goes but I can arrange something if you tip the right person 10 or 20,000 I can bring the penalty down to 5,000 I'm like what? is it how it works? like I thought it was, you know, just a, just a penalty, just a one-off fee and that's it. And then I start thinking, I'm like, that's not right, you know, I shouldn't be asked money like this, especially under the table. Last time something like this happened to me was when I was about to enter Iran, which, <laughs> which is also a bit of a special country and known for its... Uh, not very scrupulous uh, authority, but anyway, I, I didn't even end up bribe the guy because I was told that I should bribe the guy. It was back back then. It was to enter the country, and I didn't do it. And they, eventually, they still let me in without any bribe. But he, for the first time, the immigration agent asked directly a uh, money. So I know I used the word uh, extort, like you know, extortion attempt or something it's a big it's a bit of a big word i know that guys but at the end of the day that's what it is they tried you know she tried to get money from me or bribery let's say let's say attempted bribery but the other way around i don't even know if you call that attempted bribery anyway eventually i, I got away with it i think she didn't really know how to ask the money so she, i just paid a normal penalty and all but 
maybe she realized that I wasn't very happy with the situation that I had paid what I was ought to pay you know what I was supposed to pay I did pay for it I did pay the penalty I apologized I was very apologetic because I know somehow it's also my mistake it's all good now it's all done guys let's go for a little ride I'll see you soon okay so I just went to a the dealership but the owner which is also responsible for marketing is not here so i'll have to go back i'll have to come back i'll probably go back tomorrow uh, i actually had a chat uh, on the phone with him and he said he wanted to meet me so it's a good start what i'm trying to do guys uh, because i want you to understand why I, I go to ducati well it's quite straightforward i want them to help me with maintenance so basically i've been thinking about it and as a few of you mentioned in the in the chat what i pretty much do for ducati is free advertisement taking the bike all around the the place like that I always you know speaking good about it and stuff and the channel starts to generate uh, some views got my Instagram as well I had a lot of people inquiring about the bike I had a couple of people buying a scrambler and sending me pictures telling them that you know it was my fault <laughs> if they bought a scrambler anyway long story short I think it's you know fair enough I'm, I'm not asking for money I'm not asking for like a, a sponsor oh that's cool a sponsorship or anything I, I just want them to help me with the bike maintenance you know so then I can keep on riding and keep on showing the bike off that's it pretty much I think it's a fair deal I'm not asking for much and in exchange I'm happy to make some content for them to show show the place around i mean when i say the place i mean ducati so tell me what you think guys tell me if you think it's uh, i'm entitled if i'm asking too much or if i should maybe some of you would think i should ask for more uh yeah let me know i'm, I'm actually interested interested to know your opinion guys i'm just going in circles as you can see i've no idea where i'm going now i've got to go back to the hotel i've got some work to do so just for you to you know see the the place it's uh, it's good i like it so far from what i saw of Kathmandu, i like it very much so let's go back to the hotel and i'll see you soon guys oh, there's so much water in the intersection you had the policeman in orange here just giving direction it's been raining a lot in Kathmandu over the past few days as i told you that's why yesterday i went and i bought a cover for the bike the bike is parked outside and it's raining like crazy i don't know why but i feel bad inside going to uh, meet we, uh, with uh, Abinav, which is the uh, owner of the Ducati showroom in, in uh, Kathmandu here in Nepal. I just uh, stumbled upon uh, Mr. Zanak. Mr. Zanak is uh, the, the local taxi driver and he's taking me there. How are you doing brother? Good? Zanak is from a village not far from Kathmandu and he comes here to, to work and live. He's looking forward to uh, reach uh, Ducati and see, uh, see what's gonna happen there so these two gentlemen took me out for for lunch we had beautiful lunch in the 1905 suites a very fancy and cozy place here downtown in Kathmandu I've got Mr. Um, Sabal here <laughs> Sabal who is the manager of the Ducati, Ducati, Ducati showroom Nepal. here uh, Ducati Nepal and we have the big boss here Hello. the owner <laughs> Mr. Abinav, uh, thanks a lot for having me, guys. It's very, very nice of you. Yeah, we had a, we had a great chat actually. We discussed about many things, you know, the upcoming bikes here uh, in Nepal. We talked about electrics as well because it's it's a big deal also that's coming up in a in the coming years. They they also might be able to hook me up with some some people in in Ducati. <laughs> so that would definitely help me. So I'm very grateful for that to to you guys, sure. Abinav and Sabal. So always willing to help. It's it's always good to feel. Uh, support from from the Ducati house so thanks a lot guys really appreciate it later on we can have a quick look at the showroom and yeah. you can co show me the couple of Ducati bikes but yeah again thanks for for taking me here to this beautiful place and the sun is finally shining now <laughs> so yeah happy days happy days Sabal is taking me to uh, the showroom because we want to check for my uh, mudguard see if the part is available on the scrambler the mudguard and the plate holder is the same part pretty much so i'll show you on that scrambler here i'll just bring my laptop up. yeah sure so i'll show you on that scrambler so on that scrambler you can see hey boss uh that's that's exactly the part i am missing so you've got the mud guard here and then the plate holder comes right behind it's called the herger i think it's called the a tire herger actually and then you have this bit here and I need the full thing pretty much so 
I uh, love the color. Absolutely love the dark brown. The little tag here. The cool uh, side mirrors as well. Then the handlebar is uh, old school. I don't know which model is this one, but it's lovely. It's more recent than mine, that's for sure. It's got the same uh, exhaust, Terminioni. Yeah, beautiful. It's a monster. I think that's the 848. 821, sorry. It's written here. You got the monster. It's not really my uh, type of bike, to be honest, but uh, yeah, street bike, naked. Why not? It's still a lot of fun. So now walking back, look at them bikes, by, uh, guys. It's pretty cool, eh? I never heard of that brand before. Uh, well, I'm not a motorbike specialist, but uh, I love the, the seat. It's so cool like that, but you can't have a passenger. That's more old school, but that's nice too. But I love the, the brand color of that seat. It's lovely. Um, yeah, so walking back towards uh, the area I stay in, I need to find a taxi. So that would be, hopefully that won't be too hard to find. Uh, it shouldn't be, oh, there's one here, but it's taken already. Let's see, let's see how we go. Anyway, so yeah, guys left, uh, left Ducati. So two, two very nice person I was with, as you saw, Sabal and Mr. Sabal and Mr. Abinav. Yeah, and, and hopefully you see, they try to hook me up with Ducati. They explained to me that the headquarters for this part of uh, the world is Ducati Asia Pacific, which is located in Thailand. And because there might be a trip, you know, next year towards this area, it even make, makes more sense for me to reach them and see if they can support me. Not financially, just, you know, with the bike maintenance and all. So that'd be great, honestly, if they can give me this kind of help, because you know, guys, Ducati is not cheap to service. It's actually more expensive in these countries because of the tax and all. It would be cheaper for me to do it back in France. Anyway, that's how it is. But if I can get those costs covered by, you know, Ducati, that would be fantastic. At least I've got one foot in the door, you know. Okay, guys, leaving my place, leaving my hotel. Uh, so it's a, it's a place located in a, a very, apparently it's a tourist uh, hub. It's called uh, Tamil, Tamil in Kathmandu. So you see, you have a lot of souvenir shop. You have some textile shops. They sell, yeah, everything from carpets to scarf. They have jewelry as well. And uh, that's actually the hostel I stay in. Yakati Yak. Saliha recommended to me. Hello, sir, how are you? And today, this morning, I'm going to uh, pick up my tent. I actually dropped my tent. There is an outdoor. You see, there is a lot of textile shop. It actually reminds me of India in uh, Manali and, and all. Himachal Pradesh, same kind of clothing. You got jewelries, more textile, beautiful dresses for women. Oh, that's shiny. And um, yeah, there is an outdoor shop, like, you know, camping, because obviously in Nepal, uh, trekking, camping, anything outdoors is very, uh, very popular and you've got this shop here uh they sell you see sleeping bag raining raining coats and all kind of stuff so hello boss how are you today I'm good to see you man. hello how are you sir uh is the boss is here no, it's evening. oh only evening yes. oh okay because he told me to come this afternoon do you know if my uh, bag is here i i left my tent with you guys i don't know if it's ready Okay guys, so I made it to a, what seems to be a mall, Chaya, Xaya, I, I don't know how you say that. I saw that before, C double H, I think Xaya, Xaya, Chaya, I don't know how to say it, center. So by the look of it, it's a, it's a mall, yeah, as it says here. I want to go and check it out. Coffee shop, again, another uh, immigration service for students. Very popular here, it seems. It's a nice little mall. Uh, I didn't come here to buy anything in particular. I just want to, uh, to get some food. <laughs> I'm hungry. So I'll go and to the second floor. I've been told to go to the second floor. Oh, wrong one. This one's here. Hello, brother. Do you know a place called uh, Marco Polo restaurant? Oh, it's down. Oh, it's not. Okay. So down and that way. Fantastic. Thank you, brother. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I see like fancy malls like that, I feel very far from uh, from riding. You know, being on the road, and you get dusty, muddy, whatever you want. 
and now that I'm in a country's capital, you know, it's uh, fancy shops and, and all and probably a fancy restaurant as well by the look of it Marco Polo Italian and Mediterranean kitchen that looks amazing I hope the price won't be too amazing I must stay by okay guys so that's exactly what I thought this place is way too fancy for me but now I feel bad I don't want to leave because you know they turn up they turn on the lights for me they turn on the TV music you know and they brought the the menu and like the pricing up way I normally go to a little daba that's nice and cheap, you know, super good food, you pay like 300 and now we're looking at like 1200 for pizza. This is my daily budget right there, but you know, screw it now I'm here, so I'm not gonna back out. It's too late for that, so let's just pick a pizza and, uh, and pretend we can afford it. Oh, they've got pastas as well. Oh, it's been ages. Oh yeah, I might go for pastas actually. It's a bit cheaper as well. It's a win-win. Well, yeah, you see, guys, this is the <laughs> the face of my uh, daily uh, budget for food. And I hope it's going to be amazing. I'm sure it will. That's a bit silly because when you have a budget, guys, when you travel, better stick to it. And you know you're always going to go above it anyway. That's why when I do a budget, I always count 20 to 25% on top just for extras, just in case. And trust me, even though you, you think you thought about everything, you will be missing, you will be forgetting a couple of things. There is always extra, you know, there is always... Uh, Money is very easy to spend. <laughs> anyway, for now, let's dig in those fancy uh, pastas. Remind me of back home, actually. Very, uh, very nice place, as you can see. See, boss? The yeah, pastas were very good. As I told you guys, it reminded me of back home. The price also reminded me of back home. But yeah, I do recommend you to check it out, Marco Polo. Okay, guys, so now I'm gonna wait a bit until I can go back to that. Um, Outdoor, uh, outdoor shop to pick up my tent, and that's it. I'll see you. I'll see you soon, guys. Namaste. Namaste. Okay, guys. Now it's night time, and uh, it's still raining, as you can see. Uh, it's raining all the time in this country. What's going on? Back to the uh, outdoor shop. Hello, man. How are you, bro? Okay. Namaskar. Namaste, bye. Ab kaise ho? Good. Beautiful. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's orange as well. <laughs> yeah, we made four pieces. You, oh, okay. So you're going to sell it as well? Yeah. Sometimes people come here for repair and we can show them if you want this. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. You, gave, this... us, you gave us the clue. Yes. You gave us the sample. So we oh, I want product. a share of the business now. Hi. I want a share of the income. Because <laughs> pretty much I turned up with my uh, uh, destroyed the uh, tent bag. Yeah, they pretty much custom made a, a new one for me, which yeah, is waterproof. This is the waterproof. Yes. Waterproof from the Gore-Tex one. Yes. Oh, Gore-Tex. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. It's really waterproof. Long that's awesome. I just realized you made uh, two colors. Actually, the exact, exactly the same. Eh? Yeah, the same. I might go for we the brown, although this would be better for the boy. One 1.5 inch bigger than yours. So that you can fit it easy. Ah, perfect, yeah, because yeah. I'm very bad at folding my tent, <laughs> so that will help. Yeah, the brand is good, a bit more discreet, yeah, I might get this one actually. So I was looking around and they have a lot of uh, good stuff. You see, I, I need a raincoat as well, so I might get one of them. Now the question is, how genuine is that? Which one? The, that is not the genuine. <laughs> That's we good, he's, he's being honest about yeah. it, I like it. <laughs> we make it ourselves and this is our brand, Dolpo. That, that's that's yeah. the local brand, yes. Dolpo. Okay. That is our. Uh, like you brand. you mean you mean from that shop or Nepali brand? We just sell this. Okay, but that's, yeah. that's a Nepali oh, brand. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see. Nepali brand made 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 from Nepalese people. Made by, okay, made the, by Nepalese. And this meaning is also of the one place yeah. that is in Dolpa. Oh, so Dolpo is a place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but so that means it's not Gore-Tex uh, quality. Yeah, then. but it is Gore-Tex. It's still Gore-Tex. Yeah, it's still Gore-Tex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The fabric is Gore-Tex, okay. the company is not real. The company is not real. Yeah. It's the, the, the Nepali North Face. Mm. Is that waterproof, bro? Yes, this is waterproof. Yeah? yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> you, would you say it's good quality or you have better yeah, quality good. than that? We have better better cloth than this. You have better? Yeah. Well, can you show me? Bye! Yeah. Because where I'm going now, guys, it's going to be raining quite a lot. So I need, I, I bought already uh, some pants in Chandigarh. 
and now I need a jacket as well for when I'm riding. So that could be a it could be a very good move actually. No, 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 no. I'm I'm staying around Nepal for a bit and then I go uh, Sikkim. Oh, Sikkim. Yeah. So it might be also rainy there. It might be a very good move actually to buy this jacket. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you so much. They brought me a tea. That's how you treat your customer in Nepal. No problem. We have remaining balance. Remaining, remaining balance? Yeah, no, no. They have a mon have mon monthly uh, budget for uh, chai for our customers. Mm. I'm very lucky. Yeah, what are you yeah, doing now, bro? You, this guy, what's your name again? Sundays. Sundays, yeah, Sundays, true. Sundays loves to work with scissors. You yeah. see? He's always trying to cut something. Yeah, I'm the cutter boy. <laughs> if, if you see him in the street, be careful because he's gonna have those on him. Yeah. He's dangerous. <laughs> we La? have this piece here. We have this piece in our shop also. Okay. If you wanna see, I can show you. Good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very smart guy, you see? Yeah, yeah you can tell he's, been, he, he's gonna be running the shop by, by himself soon. Good job, bro. I was um, applying for Australia last week. You were? I applied for Australia last, in, yeah. last weekend uh, and uh, I got rejected before. 15 days. Why? I don't know why. You know this what? This is the tighter time. Immigration Australia. Thank you guys. It's the same for me bro. I applied for permanent residency 26 months ago. Okay. Still haven't heard anything from them. They took my money though. Eh? They were very good at taking my money. No problem. <laughs> but giving me my visa? Problem. Now you are going back to Australia? No, not for now. For now I'm traveling. I'm, I'm loving my life. Go back to Australia anytime you like. Once they give me the residency, yes, but I'm still but waiting what for it. What if they don't give you a PR? Well, then f them, you know, that's life, you know? <laughs> I mean, what can I do? They, I paid, I applied, I studied there. I studied my solar energy business there. I was paying tax, I was even hiring Australian people. Uh, my visa ran out. I applied for permanent residency because I studied there, remember I told you? And when you study, the it gives you, yeah, exactly. PR point. Exactly, you know how it works. That's good, man, you, you've done your you research. Stay? Where did you stay? I, I studied in Perth and then I moved Perth. to Melbourne to work. Perth was good for visa, right? There Actually, visa. it's because of Perth that I could apply for permanent residency because it's it's considered as a regional area, yeah. so you get more points. I, I was going to, I was planning to go to Adelaide. Adelaide, I had yeah. my brother in there and he nice. said to come here for four years and take PR and go back. Yes. So I applied for to yeah. study IT. I, I wish you, you can get the PR, bro, because once you get it, you can I just go. And I'm studying second year in bachelor's in here. Okay. I'm gonna apply soon in January in re reapply. Wish you all the best, man. Yeah. Wish you all the best. Sorry, remind me your name? Sandesh. Sandesh. Yeah. Sandesh means message. Message? Yeah. Boy, he's got an only love message to deliver, this guy. Look at him, always smiling, always happy, very nice the way he, he treats the customers. So thanks a lot, bro. Appreciate it. You are the best. Six fifty for the bag. It's like five dollars for the big one or for the tent one, which they made uh, specially for me, custom made. And three fifty, so total one thousand, which is like eight dollars. So very reasonable because we need to keep our stuff dry, guys. Come visit us, Dolpo. Yes. Oh yeah, actually yeah. Dolpo. <laughs> Corona sale, up to seventy percent off. <laughs> 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 Bro, what's your name again? Siran. Siran, I'll try to remember this one. Siran. Siran. <laughs> Siran, yeah. yeah, that's a good way to remember. Okay, Siran, Sandesh. Hello. See you guys, take care. Such a nice lads, eh? Uh, I'm very happy with the deal I made too, so happy days.